Initially following his father's footsteps working in horticulture, Fred Wall turned his attention to real estate. I decided to, to go in the real estate business. I didn't know anybody in the real estate business, but I went around and I finally got hired by the Spring Company. Then another fellow who was running another branch and I decided to go in business for ourselves. The Wall Martin Company was formed. So I started getting involved in land development. I put together another uh, company, the, was now the Wall Companies. My first project was uh, Normandale Office Park. That went well for a while and then we had another real estate crash and it just, uh, it, it was uh, a mess. Then we got to start again and about that time I met uh, Kurt Woodhouse from Trammell Crow Company. I was uh, working with Trammell Crow and we decided at that time to branch out from industrial development into suburban office. Fred uh, was up to his uh, neck in alligators uh, fighting with uh, at, least, at least one lender. But I remember Fred had ice water in his veins. I mean, he was, he was under tremendous pressure, but he didn't show it. He was a tremendously hard worker. Fred's motto must have been, uh, why, why just survive when you can thrive? When you take a look at you know one of the best suburban office developments in the entire Twin Cities, or I would even say the Upper Midwest, I think Normandale Lakes is, is clearly one of those. And I know Fred was instrumental in that vision uh, way back in the day. In addition to his residential and commercial real estate ventures, Fred Wall also owned several community banks. One of my earlier partners in real estate ventures, Steve Adams, called me and said, you know, Fred, uh, uh, I think you've heard that I bought a couple of banks. And I had, and I was always impressed with that because I didn't know people could own banks. <laughs> I thought they must be all, the government must own all those places. And that got me in the banking business. I first met Fred in about 1993 when we were both looking at a piece of property in the Highland Park neighborhood of St. Paul. So Opus redeveloped that corner and he put up his, uh, his bank building there. Most of the people who were in the banking business with me, other bank owners, uh, community bank owners, think that I'm a real estate man. Most of the real estate people who have been around me a long time think I'm a banker. Because <laughs> it must be the other thing he does, and it can't be this thing. And I always felt that the real estate business is where I take the risks, the banking business is where I just go conservative, and they'll kind of balance out. And for most of my career, that worked until this last go around. It was the other way around. <laughs> Among his most notable and heartbreaking investments, Fred owned and managed the historic renovation of the Fauché Tower. I understood that uh, Apache was going to move out of the Fauché. So I went to them and I said, I'd like to buy it. We're going to go and we're going to do a historic renovation of that gorgeous building. And so we'll do one floor at a time and move the people back and forth and so forth. And um, anyway, we bought it because it seemed like a great idea. And it was a great idea. But timing is everything in the real estate business. No sooner did we own the Fauché Tower, uh, the rental market just collapsed. I had people coming in saying, I can go across the street for $2 a square foot. Well, my debt service was $10 a square foot. I don't care uh, how basic your arithmetic is, that doesn't work very well. While that is, owning the Fauché was one of my prouder moments. Losing the Fauché was not one of my prouder moments. Fred's been in the business for a very, very long time, and you don't have a successful career like that if you don't do what you say you're going to do, and if you aren't uh, uh, respected and have high, high degrees of integrity. When things go wrong, and you're stuck with it, and you can't go anywhere, and you've got to get up every morning and work on it, it's amazing what you learn. Our founder, uh, Jerry Roundhorst, was uh, a visionary, and everything that we do, uh, we try and do like Jerry did, and it's with the highest degree of integrity. In dealing with Fred, I sure felt like Fred also was a man of integrity and put that first and foremost in all of his dealings, which is uh, really the, the epitome of, uh, of somebody deserving of this award. Fred, I don't think, was ever looking for any accolades for himself. That's the way he operates. But I, I like the term Lifetime Achievement Award because, as we know in our industry, uh, in particular, there are a lot of uh, uh, what you might call a flash in the pan, but Fred's uh, longevity speaks for itself. I have been lucky with friends. I mean, I have got more help from my friends, maybe because they think I need it. <laughs> Fred is one of those guys who can, who can be very proud of 
the impact he had on the communities that he worked in. You'd just drive by and see these fantastic office buildings and bank buildings and apartment buildings and, and you know those didn't happen without Fred's vision. So I think uh, like a lot of the folks who have been nominated to the Hall of Fame, he was a true visionary and is a, is a visionary. Please congratulate Fred Wall, 2016 award recipient of the Minnesota Real Estate Hall of Fame.